All right, so I'm updating my little portable solar system here, and I'm gonna add this device. I'll explain what that is in a second, but I wanted to share with you what I did. I posted a video a few years ago when I built this, and it worked fantastic until it didn't work. So what I originally had was this smaller um, inverter, which worked great, didn't fail, worked fantastic. I even got the solar panel, the original one from Costco, and it came with this little charge controller. And I found it wasn't working anymore. And it turned out that the batteries, these aren't lithium ion, these are just sealed lead acid batteries, failed. Because what was happening was this guy was just, would charge up during the day and then completely run out and really just crush the batteries to zero and then charge back up again and it can't take that. So what I've done was, so we can get rid of this, put that over there. We don't need this, put that over there. So what I did was on Amazon, got this 1500 watt inverter. I thought it was the same manufacturer because of the color, but who knows. Um, and uh, it's 1500 watt because what I want to do is ultimately run my pool pump. This is going to go over by my pool area. This controls all the outside lights of the pool and I want to upgrade it. So I've got a 50 amp hour battery coming. It takes a while for those things to ship. And um, everybody was telling me about Victron Energy, Victron Energy. Cause you know, I'm a pal Mr. Guy. Here's my solar setup right now, working fantastic. And it's time to work on this. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna put this latching relay in. So. It doesn't have the greatest reviews on Amazon, but this was really the only game in town. There was a lot of cutoffs, but then I'd have to get a separate contactor. This was the only one that I saw that goes up to 80 amp, and um, you can select different voltages. So I have it to shut off at 10 volts and turn back on at 13 volts. I'm going to try that to start. Um, and that's what these dip settings are. So the, f the first four are for the... Uh, cut off and then the reconnect is from five to eight the last four and if you look at the side here It gives you a little reading and tells you what to set it at and I also put in a little light I added this little pilot light right here, and uh, this was original. I Just MC4 connectors on the end uh, Here's my output my output just goes to a so I'm work in progress here Output output goes right to a receptacle. Everything is weather tight. And again, this thing worked fantastic. So I'm going to install it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this DIN rail. And I saw that I had this DIN rail. This is my ground. So this is literally screwed in and tightened in with a metal clip. And it's grounding this box. So I like that. I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to cut this DIN rail here. And I'm going to mount this here. And then once my battery comes, yeah. Anyway, going in real easy. And I'm waiting now for the battery. So the battery just needs to connect, um, obviously the main battery here. This is my shunt. No, it's not a shunt, I'm sorry. This is that um, latching relay. When the voltage gets too low, 10 volts, it'll open up. And that was the problem I was having. So, um, yeah, and then the alarm, um, I'm able to activate that little light from the output. So I got the instructions here. It's pretty good. Seems like a nice piece. It was about 80 bucks for that piece. And it gave me pretty clear instructions. So I wanted to run light just to know when it's running, but instead this light will go on when this latch is open. So when the voltage gets below 10, that light will go on and let me know that uh, it's now out of battery. So someone asked me about how I mounted this switch. And basically I just took a piece of DIN rail and I just put a little, put it in my vise and just bent it in the 90. And uh, this is obviously attaches through the DIN rail. You can see the connection here. And uh, nice. It's got a nice lock right there to keep it from moving. There's also a little, a little screw there. You can see that holds in the little Allen to kind of lock into the shaft. So 
So yeah, the output is just a regular Hubble receptacle, regular 15 amp um, receptacle right there. It's a 15 amp outlet. There's two of them. There's some USBs, and uh, I want to make sure it's on. I don't want to. Yep. We'll go on when it's ready. Now I'm just waiting on the battery. Finally, got the battery in. Eco-worthy, 50 amp hour, 12 volt battery, $130. And it took, I don't know, 10 days to get here. So let's dress this up and let's get her on. All righty. Installed. I just trickle charged it all the way up and uh, it seems to be working smartly. Seems to be working smartly. I know this is upside down 13.2 volt. I don't know what the three is, I gotta find out, but it was easier to mount it upside down. Look how nice and short that lead is, right? If I had it on this side, I would have had this, so that's fine. It's going to be closed anyway. I won't be able to see it. And let's see my solar disconnect. All right, let's go bring it out and connect it to the solar panel. And here we are outside. So one little tip before I go into some of the measurements here is whenever you mix and match solar panels like I did, I mean, it looks like the same manufacturer, but two different brands. And the MC4 connectors aren't standard. So on this one, it was the, the female. And on that one, it was the male as a positive. So you just got to make sure you have a little assortment of connectors and little tricky things like this to get it to work. Um, and then you can address it and dress it up like I'm going to do in a minute. So let's go take our little voltmeter out here. And uh, we're going to go across... The photo array now this is the direct voltage coming from and yeah, we got 16 16 amp 16 volts DC that's coming right from the Sun before it was 20 amp, 20 volts but you can see I'm losing some of the Sun here and uh, this thing is working really nice so if I turn this off I mean here's my output or my inverter it shuts the inverter off it's really cool put it on auto you got the little fan that just came on you can see my blue light which means I'm uh, bulk charging this battery so I'm gonna let it sit for a day or so and uh, dress it up because I'm gonna have to extend some wires and mount this permanently so uh, let me close it up and right now I have it connected to my landscape lights and uh, we'll go on the next step but so far guys working really good let me show you how I mounted these solar panels I think I want to do is put a pool cabana here and then put um, a full system in I have that sun gold inverter and be nice to be able to power my pumps I got three pool pumps and I've also got a heat pump so I use so much electricity here. But yeah, you can see this is the Coleman and this is the, I don't know what it is, Renogy? Forget what this one was. Uh, Soul Perk. This one, this one was almost a hundred bucks on Amazon two years ago, not Amazon, Costco. And this one was like 53 bucks. You can see, look how much smaller it is. You see the technology really coming along. And I really like this voltmeter too. I enjoy here and then also here to be able to read it. Now oh, I wanted to check the current also. And uh, wow, it's pretty good. Almost eight amps. And that's what you get when you put in parallel. Right? Or, uh, yeah, these are in parallel. This is the negative side, obviously, positive. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good for just 200, 200 watts of solar. All right, guys, just wanted to update the current.